Greetings, friends. This is Season 2, Episode 8. Please subscribe. In this video, we will continue showing oil ports that are under the bed on the bottom of the machine. This is what Mint Magic looks like if we took the top of, off of it. As you can see, there's not much to, to see here because everything is, is sort of covered. This does give us a good opportunity to see the oil ports here, 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 and there, there, and there. So that's what the green machine looks like when we get under there. Moving along, this is a, a zigzag stitch disc. I don't know if we can see that it shows a zigzag pattern or whatever, but it goes on. This indentation here lines up on that post. So it goes on there like that. And then once we have it on there like that, get the cover and we'll just snug that up so when it turns it doesn't deviate from its path as far as that goes. That's about it. What I would like to start talking about is this throat plate cover and we're going to take a, a good look at it. Good way to take this off. You have to be very fragile with these things because you can break the retainer that holds these things underneath and we don't want that to happen obviously. So what I do is I just gently put my fingers underneath and I lift it up like that so that it's clear of the, the needle and the foot and then I push it to the left and it slides out. And this is the bottom of it and this really demonstrates how this is an oil port because it's, it's a hole. It goes right through. These two holes are not oil ports or for accessories or anything like that. It's where the screws that hold the spring that keeps the throat plate cover tight in position. So that, I wanted to show you that. I'm hard at work with a cup of coffee here, and I just will have a sip of brew, if you all don't mind. Very nice, very nice indeed. Anyway, there are not a lot of oil ports, per se, on the bottom of the machine. There is one there. I'm trying to see where there might be another one. Yes, this is the bottom of one of the oil ports from the top. However, the places where I would oil, if I was, when I am down here oiling, I'd oil that, I'd oil that, I'd oil there, I would oil there, probably there. This is the metal cloth cleat belt. There's no um, rubber belt or direct drive motor. This is what drives the, the, the machine. The electric motor drives the, the mechanical motor. And the, the metal cleats go in these grooves here and they are spaced and the metal cleats are spaced correctly to match these. But as I said, I would oil there, 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 there. I would do it there, I would do it there. Pretty, pretty much anywhere you see oil on uh, steel on Pardon me, steel on steel. Pretty much anywhere you see steel on steel. The other thing that I would like to really take a look at is I'd like to look in here. And I'd like you to see it in here. And so <clears throat> I'm going to get the screwdriver. And I'm going to undo this. Oopsie daisy. Wants to slide. And I just want to see if there's, if it's a real mess in here. And it may be because I mean this machine is decades old. There's the one screw. Here's the other one. There's only two screws. I'm going to get some paper towels or whatever. 
I have paper, well, I have shop towels, but I got paper towels here today. Because it may be quite messy. It may not be. It may be really clean. The guy may have, this machine was serviced, so this. Now I've got a flashlight, and we'll get in a little closer. And what we're looking at, you can see the teeth there that it's, that it's geared. And, whoopsie daisy. And this is the end of the shaft that goes all the way down to the cleated drive belt. And that's why that grease is there. And there's not, there, you know, there's a, a little bit of excess, but I have opened these up. And if they've never been cleaned or opened for, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, um, I've had a number of them. I only have five of these machines, and I think this one and one other have been kind of clean like this. The rest of them have been full of uh, old grease and oil. And that's, that's what this is, old oil. So this will have to be cleaned. This will have to be cleaned. Anywhere you see these kind of oily, greasy, dark brown stains, uh, I use a a product called Crut Cutter, made by Rust-Oleum, and uh, I do swear by this stuff. If you're familiar with AndyTube, he's a really good uh, restorer here on YouTube. I learned I learned a lot from him. I check a lot of I learn a lot. Well, I check a lot of his videos because he's been doing this for a number of years. But that's what it looks like. So I'm glad that that is just the way it is. Let's take a look and see what we get off here, if anything. Okay, yeah, we got some, where am I? You know, we, got, we, can get some, we can get some of it off if we want to. I'll do that, I'm not really cleaning it, I'm just playing with it now. But there we see the teeth and how they all line up to rotate the, the, um, the bobbin. So we'll put that cover back on after I throw that or the Q-tube, Q-tip or whatever way. Actually, I should, being a good restorer, take this and I'm just sandwiching it between the paper towels and wiping it off. I have degreaser in my bathroom, so if my fingers get really greasy, I can degrease them. But soap and water will take it off. And sometimes if I know I'm gonna have a really grimy, greasy day, then I wear, I wear gloves. But, so, how does this go? Doesn't go like that. It goes like that. And then what I have to do is Take the screw and install it. Screw it in. Attach it, as it were. Dealing with small screws, it's quite often difficult to, to line them up if you can't see where you're going. There. Now we'll get the other one before we tighten that up. There's no problem with me taking my time. It's actually a good way for me to work, and I like it. I'm kind of a slow time taking person. So there, that's that part there. Another point I would like to show is that the, the shank is straight. It is not like a 400 or 500 where it's on, a, on an angle moving forward towards the, this is actually the front of the machine. I know I don't get it either. And that's actually the back where the, the, the balance wheel, the hand wheel is. We call it the hand wheel, Singer calls it the balance wheel. Um, 
but yeah, it is straight. Uh, it has a straight uh, bar, not a slanted one. There is the needle. And while we're here, we should take a quick look what's behind that little door. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but we will take a little look-see. So we, all we have to do is undo that and it'll allow us to check out the inside and see how clean or dirty it is, is or isn't. This is very easy to apply, to apply. I'm going to adjust the camera so we're more focused on what I'm talking about here. And you'll see there is a, a little screw here. And that screw gives a place for this, this slot to place itself correctly. And then once you lower it, it's all lined up for attaching it or unattaching it. I'll show you that again. So this slot here at the top goes right on top of that screw. And once you set it on there, this lines up accurately and we can replace the screw to keep the cover on there. We didn't turn the machine around the other day, but since we have it turned around now, I am going to show you the rest. This is a good position to show these oil ports on the back. One, two, three, four, five. That's one, two, uh, an oil port. Six, seven, eight, nine. And then there's a couple around the front, so it's maybe 10 or 11. These are also oiled. These are the the holes for the um, to attach it to the to the case. This machine came with a portable case that didn't come with a desk. I like portable portable cases. They take up a, a lot less room to store. But and while we're here, we will take a, a little look at the back of the motor. What we can see on the back of the motor. And I want to point something out. The back of the, this motor says made in Canada. And I think we talked about this last video that these K machines, like my 306Ks and this 319K, the K stands for Kilboe Scotland. And the machine was made in Scotland and imported to St. John's, Quebec, south of Montreal, just north of the New York border. And the electricals, and the cabinets or portable cases or whatever the machine is going to be working in, um, they're installed in Canada, in Quebec. So quite often people misinterpret that they think that because the electric motor says made in Canada, they think that the sewing machine was made in Canada, and that's not correct. It also gives the electrical information. We see that We see that it is a five, uh, zero decimal five three amp motor, so it's 0.53 of a motor. There's the serial number of the motor, and here I'll turn it around and turn it upside down. Where is it? And he, I just threw my pencil away. And here is the sewing machine serial number, EL535310. And you can, we can go to the Singer, there's some Singer websites. And, and the value or the benefit of that serial number is that 
it lets you know which allotment of sewing machines this machine was manufactured in. And when I say allotment, and that's what Singer used to call them, they would, sorry guys and gals, a Singer would, would uh, let the factory know that there is going to be an allotment of 500,000 machines or 100,000 machines or whatever. And when you go and check on the, that information on the, uh, from, you know, from the old records and that, it gives you a date range. It can't tell you that this machine, number 123456, was made on January 1st, 1949. What it does is it tells you that this allotment of maybe 100,000 or 150,000 machines or whatever, 75,000, was made from maybe March 1949 to November 1950 or 1951. So you know the, the date range. You never get an exact date. Of course, here is the... The model number that says 319K. And this is the stitch length lever. And this is how you control the stitch length lever. See how that thing is, oh, my hand's in the way. See how that lever is rising as I turn that in? And that has to be weld in there too. Uh, and so does that. <laughs> These do come off. These I leave alone. And the same with this medallion. I do not put metal cleaner on those because it will go to uh, a very silvery aluminum looking color. I made that mistake on one machine only. So, so there we're, we're kind of having a, an inspection of this machine. And it does so. But this is the one that the lady had taken it to um, a sewing machine dealer in Ottawa and he charged her about $125 to let's say tune it up make sure that the needle is right on target right on aim greased it oiled it and if, he, if the belt needed replacing he would have done that so I mean there's not a lot that can really go wrong with these machines they're, they're pretty sturdy, you know, and it comes from a time where everything was, you know, now we look at it as simple mechanics. So I wanted to, this, this kind of gives us, you know, an idea of all the oil ports and that sort of thing. And there's a nice end view there. So that's what this little video has been about. I'm not going to take this machine apart because it is, has been looked by, uh, checked and uh, maintained by a professional. And so the, it cost the lady $125 Canadian to get it uh, tidied up. And then she asked $160 for it Canadian, which is a little less. I think Canadian dollar is like worth 75 or 76 cents of an American dollar right now. So it's, you know, 160 is probably maybe 150 or 145 American. But it was good value. The machine's in good condition. They're a beautiful color. They're, you know, they have these really nice... They have these really nice, cool-looking stitch levers. There we get a better shot of them there. And so the nickname for the stitch levers was piano keys. And people referred, back in the day, they referred to, uh, you know, the 319K or 319W or the 320K, 320W. Uh, 320Ws were made, uh, I believe, in, uh, I believe it's Bridgeport, Connecticut. And uh, the A's were made in in South Carolina. You get a 301A or a 400A, uh, 401A, then it was made probably in uh, 
down to South Carolina. But anything with a K was made in uh, Scotland. Anything with a G and the model number, like a 414G, that was made in Germany. Singer bought an awful lot of sewing machine companies that were in an industrial area of Germany. I believe it was called Karlsruhe. Karlsruhe or Karlsruhe. And that's where a lot of those wonderful German machines came from. Anyway, that's all I have for us today. I am going to... That was my pencil sharpener falling. No alarm. I am going to show you how I put this back in. The most important thing we have to pay attention to... I'm moving you guys all over the place here, aren't I? So we see uh, this spring with the two screws and we see that the top of the plate floats in that indentation and then we raise it, but we have to make sure we get both ends of the spring or clip. There it's in now. And we'll push it in and push it down. And there we have it. It is flush and it's ready to go again. So I hope this has been helpful to you. There's the tension device. Whoopsie daisy. No, there isn't. There's the tension device, and this, this thing here adjusts the, the position of the needle, whether you want it centered, left or right. Can we see it? Let me give you a shot, a little show of it right now. I don't know how easy that is to see, but... Oh, it's hard to see because... Oopsie daisy! What happened there? Maybe that's a better way to look at it. But there's the needle. Did you see that? If you look at the, the needle bar, you can watch it go left, center, right. And to give you the big picture, it's watch my finger down here on the left, and there's my hand adjusting it, and there's center. Oh no, that's right, center, left. So you can see. That's how you position the needle, center, left, or right. I hope you have enjoyed this. Thank you for, for coming and visiting. Please do subscribe, and when you do subscribe, there'll be a little notification bell goes up beside the subscribe button or, or whatever on your, on your screen. And you press that little notification bell and put it on all, then every time I post, you will get a notification that Jeb Adams posted another video. I'm a little... I, I don't post uh, every Friday or every Tuesday on a weekly basis. I will end up doing that again, and I have done it in the past. And for two months, I, I posted a video every day. But uh, when you're posting a video every day, the quality is not there because the time is not being invested uh, in, into, the, into the video. I hope you have enjoyed this. Thank you very much for coming here. And uh, please do come back again. And lastly, subscribing does help me help the machines. I'm self-funded, and uh, so eventually, if I get enough subscribers, I will get monetized, and I will be able to continue making videos. It, it does cost a little bit of money to make videos and stuff. Anyway, y'all have a great day. Thanks very much. Jeb Adams, out.